So I'm scrolling through twitter.com forward slash I'm definitely going to find something that annoys the crap out of me and I stumble upon this video of Mehdi Hassan, MSNBC host, going after Bill Maher, calling him an evil white racist because Bill Maher said something sensible, accurate, true, and honest on his show and Mehdi Hassan is still angry that Bill Maher at certain points in time would criticize Islam, so he decided to flex on him and call him an evil white racist even though, again, Everything Bill Maher said is true, and everything Mehdi Hassan is about to present to you is going to be classic level one crime denial. In fact, some of it is actually level zero crime denial, which we're going to get into. As a Muslim, I have fond memories of Bill Maher lecturing Muslims at the height of the Al-Qaeda and ISIS threats on the need for my community to condemn terrorism and speak out against the extremism in our midst, as if many of us Muslims weren't already doing that, and as if Muslims were uniquely violent. So first things first that you should notice is that Mehdi Hassan can't even put up on screen headlines that line up with what he's saying, and this is a very troubling sign. He's making the claim that Bill Maher wants all Muslims to apologize for terrorism, and he's going after all of them, even though you can see in these headlines, he's actually talking about liberals and condemning them for their hypocrisy, saying that illiberal values in the Islamic world are in fact just cultural differences and therefore we should let them go. Again, just a look at the headlines that are being displayed. Let me read some of them to you for my podcast listeners. The Washington Times, Bill Maher blasts liberals for defending Islam. Muslims sharing Western values is BS. Again, he's talking about Muslims in the Islamic world. Bill Maher on Islam. All religions are not alike. From September 23rd, 2012. By the way, the first one was from November 21st, 2015. So he's really reaching for it. Now, I just want to say, yes, accurate, sure, 100%. And if it were any other religious group, we wouldn't even be having this conversation that at different periods of time, certain religious groups behave differently. There's sometimes periods of more violence versus less violence. If Bill Maher was talking about Catholics in a context where they were perpetrating terrorist attacks across the world, this would not be an issue at all whatsoever. But because it's Islam, and that's perceived as a religion of color, you have Mehdi Hassan pulling up these headlines saying, wow, Bill Maher is asking him all the Muslims to apologize for this, even though my headlines are not showing anything of the sort. And the next headline is from November 1st, 2020, and it's says Bill Maher stands by Muhammad remarks I don't need to apologize for being a proud Westerner so yeah none of these headlines precisely zero none at all whatsoever have to do with demanding all Muslims apologize for the actions of a few it's just not there it's not present Bill Maher is saying that illiberal values that we see in the Islamic world are in fact illiberal values, and liberals should stop making excuses for them. So actually, what Bill Maher's doing, Mehdi, I know you're having a little bit of trouble with thinking right now, is telling liberals to stop making excuses for poor behavior that they would not tolerate from Christians or from Jewish people. That's what's going on here. Well, Maher is doing the same lazy, offensive routine. Shootings are young black men killing other young black men. So I just want to point out that as Mehdi Hassan is saying that Bill Maher is still doing the lazy, offensive routine, there's a hard, weird cut because Mehdi Hassan was too lazy to actually check that the video was out in its correct form before uploading it to Twitter, and he says they're doing it related to shootings and black crime in the United States of America. Then he's going to go to the clip. I'm going to play the Bill Maher clip from you. You're going to hear it, and you're going to think, what is Mehdi Hassan on about? Shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Well, I mean, uh, why aren't there, uh, you know, a uh, uh, hundred giant black celebrities who would have the respect of those people saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Why are you killing each other? This I mean, is no I just, way to live. This dishonors our community. Come on. Uh, we're better than this. Right. I feel like it's never addressed. So what Bill Maher said right then and there is perfectly sensible, accurate, and it makes a lot of sense as long as you're not a left-wing progressive, aka somebody who has a functioning brain. So what he's saying is that black-on-black -black homicide 
is far more likely to kill a black person in any given year than the police killing an unarmed black person to which we have about eight or nine cases per year. So why aren't people talking at the same level about this crime problem as they are about the police problem? And I would actually say, why aren't they talking at many multiples of a level more about the crime problem as they're talking about the police problem? Because the police problem is statistically in a nation of 300 million people insignificant and more importantly the reason why black people are having more interactions with the police is due to higher rates of violent crime so if you want less interactions with the police addressing the crime is absolutely crucial so one problem is actually based on the other one and that one's the bigger larger scale one and yet it is not talked about in mainstream media parlance in fact what we often get from the media is what Mehdi Hassan is about to do right now which is again level zero crime denial tactics. How many racist tropes can you fit into one Bill Maher clip? There was zero in there. I don't know if you're paying attention, Mehdi. I know you just do whatever your corporate overlords tell you to do, and now you're on MSNBC, and they're incentivizing crime denial, but there was absolutely no racist tropes in there at all whatsoever. There was just actual reflection of what's going on in terms of crime data. First off, Chicago, really? I mean, it's the predictable go-to criminal dystopia for right-wingers, but that's not the reality. Chicago isn't even in the top 10 or top 20 deadliest cities in America. Okay, so first and foremost, the reason why Chicago is notable to talk about is because the numbers are often outrageous due to the fact that Chicago is the third largest city in the United States of America. But to be clear, the homicide rate in Chicago is significantly larger than the other two cities. In fact, New York has about, after the crime spike, 450 murders in the city per year. That's where we're at. We used to be around 300, but again, it's 450. Now, New York City, largest city in the country, three times larger than the city of Chicago. So compared to Chicago, if things were normal, if you set New York as the standard, you would expect to see three times less the homicides. You would expect to see around 150 homicides. But what you actually see is that Chicago hit over 800 murders for the first time in 25 years years. Mehdi, this would be interesting. This would be notable. This would be the reason why Chicago is being highlighted specifically because the homicide problem, which is what Bill Maher has brought up, has gotten worse. The fact that there are worse cities in the United States of America does not take away from Chicago's existence or what's going on there or that it's wildly disproportionate to what it should be based on the standard of our largest city in the United States of America. But yeah, that's why Chicago is notable highest homicide rates since 1990s that's huge that's a big deal they're trending in the wrong direction is this not a concern to you but i want to address the second point that he made and i'm going to replay it because i want to show you how stupid this is it ranks below cities in red states like tuscaloosa alabama and columbus georgia so one of the modern crime denial tactics that we're seeing being put forward is to go to red states states in particular when talking about comparing city to city. And the reason why people like Mehdi Hassan do stuff like this is because this obfuscates the blame from the local government, which by the way, is the government that is in fact responsible for reducing crime. This actually isn't even that complicated to understand. When you're interacting with the police in your community, how often are they the police of your state? not very often. Sometimes on highway patrols, sometimes you interact with the state trooper on various other circumstances, but for the most part, you're interacting with your local police department because crime is solved at a local level. Now, there are statewide laws that can have negative impacts or positive impacts, but crime, police departments, and everything related to the criminal justice system is a local level. Your county will have a district attorney, not a statewide district attorney that prosecutes every case. We have dramatic disparities in terms of crime within the same state, so it would be absolutely ridiculous and absurd to say that the state government is doing an excellent job in policing in this county versus that county, when obviously the police departments are run on a local level in each individual county. So what he's doing right here is trying to deflect to Republicans, saying Republicans are bad, which, by the way, is also disingenuous, because if you actually go down the list to the number one cities in terms 
terms of crime, they're Democratic strongholds. This same list published February 23rd, 2022, which by the way, looks at the 2019 numbers. And what's interesting about the choice to go with the 2019 numbers is that 2019 to 2020, the year over year increase in homicide was 30% the largest increase in American history. Chicago's dramatic increase where they hit 800 murders for the first time in 25 years was after this point. So Medi is specifically looking at years and data that is outdated pre-Black Lives Matter crime spike where we passed a bunch of these criminal justice reforms that had all of these negative effects in order to obfuscate the issue. And by the way, this would not make Chicago rush up to number one or anything like that, but we know from our previous coverage on this channel that New Orleans, which is ranked about seventh, is actually now closer to number one, if not number one, depending on how the rest of last year went. We'll wait on the numbers to come out in full for 2022 before we discuss that, but also that's another Democratic stronghold. You have St. Louis, Missouri, Democratic stronghold, Baltimore, Maryland, Democratic stronghold in a Democratic state, Birmingham, Alabama, which again is Alabama, Republican stronghold, but guess what? The mayor is a a Democrat and a black Democrat. You also have Detroit, Michigan. Again, all of these cities are Democratic strongholds and they have the highest rates of violent crime. And yet Chicago with its majority minority population and its progressive black mayor elect is the place that people like Bill Maher always want to talk about and fear monger about. Wonder why. And yet Chicago with its majority minority population is one of the places that Bill Maher and people like him always want to talk about. I wonder why. I already said that Trump brought it up. Therefore, it must be evil white racism, which I find incredibly interesting. Hold that thought for one second. Chicago isn't even in the top 10 or top 20 deadliest cities in America. It ranks below cities in red states like Tuscaloosa, Alabama and Columbus, Georgia. Because those cities that Mehdi Hassan just happened to bring up right there have a black population of 44% and 46% respectively to Chicago's 29%. So Mehdi Hassan, while accusing Bill Maher of being an evil white racist for bringing up a majority minority city, by the way, he's talking about a lot of Hispanics in the city of Chicago to try to supplement and put that over the top and having a black progressive mayor and this whole topic's about black crime, he said aren't as bad as these other cities with higher percentages of black people. Mehdi, I wonder why the cities that you highlighted in your video as being more violent, more deadly than the city of Chicago have larger black populations than the city of Chicago. Maybe, possibly, call me crazy, call me a conspiracy theorist, it's because the same reason that we talk about black on black crime, because it is significantly higher than white on white crime, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but we're going to get into that. And yet Chicago, with its majority minority population and its progressive black mayor-elect, is the place that people like Bill might always want to talk about and fearmonger about. Wonder why. Also, I just want to point out that even though Brandon Johnson is a progressive black mayor elect, they also have a progressive black mayor and they have a progressive black prosecutor, the Cook County prosecutor, who doesn't prosecute anybody. But the idea that you would hype up Brandon Johnson instead of talking up your girl Lori Lightfoot who led us to this crazy crime spike in the city of Chicago I find it quite interesting I wonder why you're leaving that out and you're just talking about as if the new black person is just coming in and they didn't already just have a progressive black mayor a progressive black female lesbian mayor by the way second the whole black people killing other black people black on black crime are you kidding me White people kill other white people at almost the same rate that black people kill other black people. And yet you never hear anyone complaining on TV about white on white crime. And there we have it. Level zero of crime denial coming from MSNBC's Mehdi Hassan. Blow, people talk about how black people are killing black people at a certain percentage. But guess what? White people kill white people at similar rates. Mehdi, this is not true. This is a ridiculous assertion. What you're trying to say is that the percentage of white murder victims who are murdered by white people is similar, still lower by the way, than the percentage of black murder victims that are murdered by black people. That is not an interesting statistic because we already know that the majority of the time, the overwhelming majority of the time when somebody's murdered, they're murdered by people they know. People they know tend to live in their communities. The communities 
tend to be reflective of their own racial demographics. So you could go to almost any single group and talk about how the overwhelming majority of the people who murder somebody of the same ethnic origin happen to be of the same ethnic or racial origin. Thank you, Mehdi Hassan, for talking about that. White people kill other white people at almost the same rate that black people kill other black people, and yet you never hear anyone complaining on TV about white on white crime. Now, Mehdi, you can use a stupid voice like you're an internet streamer after saying something as ridiculous as that, but it doesn't make anything that you said any less absurd because what we know based on the numbers is that the black homicide rate is six times higher. Here's a chart from the CDC so you can look at it for yourself. So the reason why, if you can't figure it out, that the black on black crime rate is a bit more notable than the white on white crime rate or the Asian on Asian crime rate or the Hispanic on Hispanic crime rate is because it's significantly more. So Mehdi, do you understand scale? Do you understand that there's more of something? Do you understand what a bigger problem is versus a smaller problem? Do you understand that larger number bigger than smaller number, Mehdi? Do you get it? Are you following? This is why people talk about black on black homicide as compared to white on white homicide because black on black homicide is significantly higher. There's more of it. It's more common. It's a larger problem. And oftentimes, black activists and people in the media like you Mehdi Hassan want to talk about instead of all of these thousands of murders that go on each and every single year the nine unarmed black people who are killed by the police and by the way amongst those group of people are people who are actively trying to take a gun from a police officer or driving their vehicle at the police so they are unarmed in the sense that they didn't have a firearm at the start of the interaction and or a knife so they are actively trying to arm themselves in the majority majority of cases or presenting a deadly threat by driving a motor vehicle at police officers. So even that nine number, I want to be 100% clear, is not an accurate number. So these aren't points of sage wisdom from Ma, they're classic racist dog whistles. Look, I know that the left has been kind of obsessed with saying that two plus two equaling four is white supremacy and sexist racism, transphobicism, but no, Mehdi, math is math. Numbers are numbers. We understand what scale is, even if you don't, and we're not going to deny crime because it makes you uncomfortable. Finally, there's Mars Canard. Why don't prominent black people speak out against black violence, like, say, Marr and his guest, the black conservative economist and podcaster Glenn Lowry? I feel like it's never addressed, he says in that clip. Well, aside from the typical double standards, aside from the why don't white leaders speak out against white child sex offenders or white serial killers or white domestic terrorists. Mehdi, the way that you opened this whole thing with talking about how Bill Maher was condemning certain aspects of Islamic culture, I'm not sure if you want to go in specifically into groups of people that are systematically abusing children, especially considering that you're from the United Kingdom. I don't think you're ready to have that conversation on who might be doing that disproportionately. I I don't think you're ready for it. As for the serial killers, unsurprisingly, what he's putting forward is a racist trope that most serial killers are white men. That is only true in absolute terms, as in majority of the population of the United States is white and males commit the most crimes. So most serial killers are white men in terms of those terms. But per capita, guess what? It's black men. Sorry, hate to break it to you. The facts are the facts, Matty. Unlike you, again, I understand what per capita means and not only in the context of when I'm trying to obfuscate the dramatic crime increases in the city of Chicago. I understand it in all contexts. So thanks for playing on that one. And what was the last one? So white domestic terrorists. Uh, Mehdi, yeah, again, listen, listen. I, 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 I'm trying to be nice here, but you don't want to have a conversation about who's disproportionately committing acts of terroristic violence. You don't want to have that discussion. You don't want to talk about how the Muslim population in the United States of America is 1% of the population as compared to the amount of attacks that can be attributed to them. Trust me, bro, you're, you're not here for it. You're not in for it. You're not ready for it, obviously. And by the way, if we're talking strictly on racial lines, you might not be ready for how that shakes out either. It's demonstrably and offensively wrong to suggest that black public figures aren't trying trying to tackle or condemn gun violence. Many have done so here on this show. I mean, does Bill Maher not know any black leaders? If he wants to hear from a black public figure about black violence, quote unquote, why doesn't he, I don't know, 
Ask them. So what I find absolutely hilarious about this is that Mehdi says, oh, Bill, why don't you actually ask black leaders? And they'll tell you that they talk about uh, gun gun violence all the, all the time. Um, yeah, well, here's some silent clips of a group of four people that were totally talking about gun violence. And by that, of course, he means gun control, which, again, would beg the question for somebody like Mehdi Hassan, who doesn't understand scale, doesn't understand anything interesting like that, to ask... Did gun laws significantly change in the United States of America over the last three years? No, absolutely not. They just factually did not. But you know what did change? The way that we treat youth offenders. And you know why I want to bring this up? It's because all of these progressive prosecutors and progressive mayors and progressive governors have worked diligently to lessen the consequences for youthful offenders. And what we've seen since this dramatic change in the law, by the way, in New York, it's called Raise the Age. Nationwide, it has similar names, but it's a similar movement, is an increase, a dramatic increase, in the homicides of young black men, specifically teenagers. And this is because we've gone soft on these offenders, so gangs actually have them carry the weapons, knowing that they're not going to serve the consequences. And Mehdi Hassan, speaking of gun control, oftentimes we hear this statistic about how gun violence is the leading cause of death for children in the United States of America, but what they don't tell you is that the overwhelming majority of the increase in youth gun violence is not children, it's teenagers, and it's not just any group of teenagers, it's young black teenagers. So what we're seeing is a dramatic change due to progressive politicians that you're carrying water for that is leading to the deaths disproportionately, dramatically disproportionately, increasing amongst young black males. So yeah, you want to play this game, Medi? You want to say oh well they talked about gun violence and gun control you better come correct because i actually know my numbers i know my facts and i know that you are absolute cowardice and disgrace personified what we're seeing on display is pure weakness pure pandering and every single person should be way more cautious of somebody like Medi, who would rather tell you a fanciful lie and let your kids die in ever increasing rates on the street rather than bill maher who will actually scaredly and timidly eventually tell the truth and acknowledge a reality from time to time on his show. This is absolutely embarrassing and it's about to get worse. Black public figure about black violence, quote unquote. Why doesn't he, I don't know, ask them? Maybe it's because he could just ask Glenn Lowry, who will tell Ma what he wants to hear. So right there, Mehdi Hassan, of course, attacks Glenn Lowry as not a real black person for actually knowing the information, by the way, which Mehdi absolutely does not, because a real black person would agree with the progressive Democratic position that there's nothing to see here and let's ignore the problem and let's blame guns. Oh my God, the guns are coming for us, even though gun laws haven't changed significantly. But what has changed is the way that we're prosecuting these offenders. But yeah, nice, nice little racist trope right there yourself, Mehdi Hassan. Nice try trying to slip that by people, but we all know what you just did right there because you're absolute scum. Irony that the person who doesn't care about black people dying in ever increasing numbers is also low key a racist himself while accusing others of doing the same thing. Does Mar even have access to Google, I wonder? Because black leaders have been speaking out and organizing against gun violence in their communities for years. Again? And again, and again, and again. As journalist Michael Harriet said in a Twitter thread responding to the HBO host, when black people are doing something, I never see Bill Maher there. Fox News never shows up at the Stop the Violence March. He's right. That Bill Maher thinks black people aren't addressing gun violence in their communities tells you much more about Bill Maher than it tells you about black people. So Mehdi Hassan, of course, closes out how he began it by using weaselly deflections and throwing up headlines and pretending like he's not completely obfuscating the issue. Because Bill Maher wasn't saying no black person ever gets upset about gun violence. Shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Well, I mean, uh, why aren't there, uh, you know, a uh, 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 hundred giant black celebrities who would have the respect of those people saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Why are you killing each other? This I mean, is no I just... way to live. This dishonors our community. Come on. Uh, we're better than this. Right. I feel like it's never addressed. What he was talking about was the fact that black on black crime, which by the way, Mehdi, if you're unsure, the homicide rate, six times the homicide rate 
of the white-on-white -white homicide, right? Six times more, six times greater, bigger number, this is why it's a concern, does not get anywhere near the same attention as a killing of an unarmed black person by a police officer, which is a significantly lower number. This is what Bill Maher was talking about. He was talking about the comparison, and he talked about how there's not a thousand black celebrities lining up to do these projects. He showed a little excerpt about how some pastors got together and wanted to do a march against gun violence, but again, the conversation was about these celebrities. Where's LeBron James? Where are all these people putting that same level of energy that they put in to, I don't know, the Ralph Yaw case, where the guy's going to make a full recovery. The guy who got $3 million for being shot because he was mistaken as a burglar by an elderly homeowner. I mean, Medi, there's an entire movement called Black Lives Matter that does not talk about black on black crime unless it's in relation to white people somehow depriving black people, therefore causing the black on black homicide. They just get deprived more and less every now and again, and that's why they're spiked and it has nothing to do with these left wing criminal justice policies which, by the way, are pushed by Black Lives Matter and pay no attention to it and just rephrase Bill Maher's question whenever you're in a bind, whenever you can't deny what he's saying is undoubtedly true and put that out on your MSNBC segment and make sure you pepper it with allegations of evil white racism every now and again so cowards would be too afraid to actually address your arguments head on. So yeah, Medi, this segment is an absolute fail. It's an embarrassment. You should be ashamed of yourself. The absolute audience audacity of somebody who is ignoring clear and obvious disparities in terms of homicide. So we're talking about disparities that cost lives among black communities versus white communities just so they can seem virtuous, just so you can get a win because Bill Maher said some things about Islam that you personally didn't like, which were also true, by the way, is shameful and disgusting. Your pure weakness personified, distilled, put on television for the world to see. And I'm glad to know that there's advertisements all over about how you're all also streaming on Peacock. If you ever wanted to watch this hot garbage, guess what? Just get a Peacock subscription and you could have Mehdi Hassan lie, whisper sweet nothings into your ear and cry about the fact that the numbers don't shake out the way that he wants them to. But hey, those are just my thoughts. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Mehdi Hassan being an absolute coward, the weakest host that I've seen in a long time. Till next time.